Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear God first. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! All right, blow, blow, boys, blow. Woo. Guys, how old is God first turning today? Eleven. That's right. God first always is turning eleven years old. And even though we don't have church today, we can still celebrate. We are so excited to celebrate with you guys. What are you doing right now? Why don't you come and join us at G1 Hub for our birthday drive-by. We want to give you a coffee and a brownie just to say happy birthday to God First Four Ways. Come and join us. Bye. 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 Happy birthday, G1. Happy birthday, God First Four Ways. Happy birthday, God First Voice. I just feel so special to be part of this amazing family. Um, and she has to the next 11 years. Happy birthday, God First. Wishing you the most spectacular 11th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, God First. We just want to say a special happy birthday to God First. One, two, three. Three, four, four ways. Ways. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, four ways. We love you. We love you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, God first from the Andersons. Happy birthday, God first. Happy birthday. <laughs> Cheers. Happy birthday, God first. Happy. Happy anniversary, God First. May you keep growing within the love of God. Happy birthday, God First, four ways. Yay! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, God First. Happy birthday, God First. Four ways. Happy God First. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God First, four ways. Happy birthday to you. I love being part of the church because I could see all my friends and I could listen to my teachers. Happy birthday, God First. Thanks to all the leaders who do so much hard work for us and have kept us all together during this um, lockdown. Bless you guys. Thanks for all that you do. We love you. Love you. Love you. Happy birthday, God First Boys. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon and an awesome year together. Happy birthday, God First Boys! What a joy it's been to be on this journey with you. We can't wait to celebrate many more birthdays together. Happy birthday, God First Boys! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, God, God First Boys! We love you! We love we miss you! <laughs> we want to come to church. <laughs> Happy birthday, God First Four Ways. It's been awesome being part of this family and this journey since the start, and we're looking forward to many more birthdays. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Well, church, it is birthday time. You've caught us in a weekend of celebration. We are turning 11 years old. Can you believe it? What faithfulness God has given to us. And there's going to be many things. We've got memories off the couch. Uh, we've got drive throughs for cakes, we've got interviews with different people, uh, and we've got lots of celebrations taking place. So it is just going to be a jam-packed service. And then on top of that, we've got babies. Kerry and uh, Andrew, well done with your baby, Gianna. It's a beautiful girl, guys, and we want to just celebrate with them. But wait, not just one. Uh, we've got Nate and Teresa with baby Joshua. Just amazing. We are growing the church one way or the other, but we're growing, guys. And talking about growing, growing up, and all those good things, uh, Sarah and Jordan got engaged this week. How amazing is that? 
We need more marriages. Come on, guys. Uh, that is just amazing. But before we get into all those kind of great things, we're going to do the most important thing, the most special thing, the most glorious thing. We're going to worship our God together. So come on, church. Uh, stand up in your pajamas. Get up. Let's listen to the band. Let's listen to these words, and let's just worship with all our hearts a great and faithful God.
So, uh, so great to worship together, uh, to acknowledge God's goodness and his faithfulness to us. What a, what a great God he is. Good, age. Well, our birthday, we get to sit on the sofa and yes. reminisce yes. over 11 years of God's faithfulness towards us. Uh, can you remember, you know, can you remember 11 years ago? Did you, <laughs> did, did you mind go back that far? We both had more hair and less belly. And um, less children of some of us as well. Absolutely, so. in your yeah. case, certainly. <laughs> and, um, but I mean, as you look back, you know, what are one or two of your favorite memories that just spring to mind? It's uh, 11 years is a long period of time, Stephen, especially with my short memory that I have. But uh, there's been so many rich moments in it. But if you have to press me for one in particular, I think it was probably uh, preaching uh, with my in-laws in the audience. Now, uh, them not being regular churchgoers was just a special moment. And I remember even after the service, everybody in tears, just praying together, uh, really touching moments. But God, God has just been so at work in those 11 years. So I just I found it amazing. But Stephen, they're not only all those serious moments, we've had some pretty hysterical uh, kind of boo-boos and blunders just because we're probably leading this thing. Uh, but maybe you can enlighten us on a few that stick in your memory. Yeah, there's been a, there's been a number of laughs. Uh, you know, when I was trying to think of funny memories, g generally anything involving you holding a micro <laughs> microphone. Um, and come, jumping up on the stage and those other things, yes. Comes to mind. I, I think when we had a dad dancing competition on Father's Day um, and Luando was doing some belly uh, some belly dancing on stage that that sticks the merry the time when we did a christmas play and steve hicks played the part of mary um that <laughs> with those balloons with that also <laughs> and then the time when we did that little skit and involved you having to sing a solo i think i think i don't know if that's a funny so memory or a traumatic <laughs> memory but uh yeah and we still have a congregation steve we because do. it sounds like we could have scared them away we do we've had we've uh, yeah we've had a lot of fun we've had a lot of fun together and i think being on mission um, is about a lot of fun but I, but I mean I think when, when we're looking at memories yeah. for me it really comes down to people uh, it's the people that you meet yeah. it's the people whose lives you know as elders um, you know our, our responsibility is to, is to shape people's lives is to input yeah. into people's lives is to offer yeah. encouragement to offer advice uh, to offer direction to counsel and to pastor I think often what people forget is just as we do that how their lives shape us it's how their That's stories so help yeah. us to mature and how we, you know, we as, as elders uh, gain and give in such an such amount. And these 11 years really have been one of great maturity. Yeah. So I remember that very first service, Stephen, that, um, and it was just really special. And there was a, a, a very first time visitor with us, John Jusen. I don't know if you remember him, but I've got, I met him this week and have a look at this. It's so amazing to be here with John. Uh, John, thanks. Uh, just for, for giving me this time and just to catch up and kind of ask things. I mean, you have been with us for the whole 11 years. I remember that first service um, uh, and, and that you were in it. Uh, it's all a little bit vague to me, but tell me, uh, why did you join us on that first Sunday? Yeah, thanks, Age. Um, well, that first Sunday, uh, my then girlfriend, Debbie, um, said, why don't you come and check out this church with me? And, so hold uh, it, hold it. Then girlfriend. Just want to log that for you guys, just um, uh, as the audience that all knows Debbie really well. Just just quick prelude on this uh, interview. Just tell us a little bit more about how she became girlfriend, or not became girlfriend, but became wife in that girlfriend. Tell us that story. Oh, boy. Yeah, so, um, so I went to the church, uh, God first at St. Peter's, and uh, it turned out that Stephen Wiley was Stephen there as well. Wiley. And uh, Stephen and I used to work together at uh, Perisys, and uh, so our relationship grew, Stephen and I, and we became friends, and um, one day at a work function, uh, we were chatting, and uh, I was telling him about Debbie and uh, you know, how special I think she is, and you know how I think she could be the yes. one. Ooh. And he was telling me all about Verve and how he knew straight away and all that. And, um, you know, we were chatting and he just said, what are you waiting for? And I, and I thought I would have some smart answer, but I'd, I'd, I didn't have anything. So that's when I took the plunge. Wow. Steve Wiley, you, you're the legend. If you're having any commitment issues, church, just Steve Wiley's uh, your man and where to go. But uh, yeah, so that's just a great story. I love it. Uh, just the way God works and works through people in us. 
I, I mean, I remember the other part of that, that service, which was just so amazing for Stephen and I, just being our first church service uh, together, was that we did an altar call at the end, uh, John, and, and you raised your hand uh, to receive Christ. Can you just tell us a little bit more what was going on in life and, and how you felt at that moment? Yeah, I think, well, at that moment in my life, I was sort of um, straight away from the church from my younger days and my yeah. youth and, um, you know, went on a bit of a rampage, I guess, in my early 20s. And um, so coming back to church that day, and uh, I'd never experienced church in that way with sort of this big projection of uh, PJ and you know this really prophetic word that he was bringing and just so much power and energy in it um, that I was I was quite taken aback actually on that first day and um, I, I, with, when you made the altar call uh, I, uh, I really felt the Holy Spirit moving me in a, in a physical way and uh, I just put my hand up and said yeah I, I want in and uh, yeah Debbie put her arm around me and we <laughs> We shared a little tear. We wept a little bit because it was really quite a, a, a physical thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, then we went up and, and you prayed for us. And uh, it's been amazing since then. Yeah, fantastic. I, I, I love that. Just um, just gives me goosebumps hearing about it. Just people's lives coming to Christ and just the work that he's done but it's been 11 years since then and I'm sure in and amongst us as community there must be some highlights there must be some moments can you just share one or two of those as we wrap up yeah we've done so much in the last 11 years we've done so much community work yeah. we've gone out and helped people yeah. so many people have come to faith the the 94 7 races yeah. always have been great and you know, uh, cooking buri rolls with um, um, Colin and uh, just lots of lots of memories and lots of real work that we've done in the community and and yeah. and getting to know the community. But the standout thing for me probably is the life groups and the the uh, journey that we've gone on with various people and from all walks of life, from all backgrounds, and we've 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 gone on this journey in Christ in the Holy Spirit together and we've yes. and we've supported each other and gone in discipleship and that's really been a, a sanctuary and a refuge for me uh, in this hectic life of Joburg to have that that Fantastic. that rock to come back to yeah wow John uh, it's just been a real treat to share moments like this 11 years can you believe it and Debs well done Steve Wiley you're the man uh, we like that Stephen it's back over to you that's why we plant churches. Amen. It's really great. So it, it, talking about planting churches, the first two years that we were uh, <laughs> running church services, Stephen, we had PJ on a big video projector. Do you remember? I do. I do. I remember the cold sweats whenever you were away, uh, and I was the guy anchoring just in case ESCOM switched off the power and I had to whip out at a moment's notice a full preach uh, to do those. But how powerful were those messages that we had? How powerful was it for kind of us to be one church with multiple congregations, if you remember, kind of PJ speaking across the city uh, into those things. And I guess what's so real is that we're not far off that right now, as uh, all of us are at home right now uh, watching us through video. And, and God seems to use this medium so powerfully. I think so. I mean, you know, Paul, Paul communicated often in writing letters, you know, and so now because of COVID, we're again back online. I didn't think we'd ever get to this particular day. But as God used video in terms of John's life, he's continued to use it now. I don't know if you've met uh, Ryan De Silva. Uh, he's a brand new member of our church. Uh, you may not have met him because uh, he's joined online. Yeah. And so I, I've, I met with Ryan this morning and we just chatted through that experience of, of him joining our church and discovering a relationship with Jesus, all from a place of lockdown. Let's, let's, let's hear from Ryan now. Great. Well, I'm joined uh, this morning by Ryan De Silva. Um, and many of you may not know Ryan because he's actually joined our church whilst in lockdown. Uh, and so, Ryan, how, how on earth did that happen? So, we actually, the first thing I did was do a marriage course. Um, my wife wanted to do a marriage course and we did it through the church. And that was actually my first introduction to the church. And then my wife, um, Candy, was watching the online services and I decided this is something I wanted to give a try. And I started watching with her. And so, tell us, uh, you, you started watching online services. How has that progressed to you uh, finding a relationship with Jesus? Um, and, and, and now playing a full part as a member of our church. 
So Stephen, at first, as I said to you, my wife was the one that was watching. She always had a strong faith and she wanted the same for me. And she's actually told me um, now that she used to pray a lot for me, for my faith. Um, and it shows God's work um, because I started watching with her and pretty much by the second service I was hooked, as you would say, because I, I what I know now I was filled with the Holy Spirit actually through that second service because I just had this overwhelming feeling of, of joy, relief, happiness. Um, and I knew from that point on I, I wanted to devote my life to God. Wow, that's, uh, that's an outstanding story. Um, and, and so as the years progressed on, you, you know, you've done our Connect Evening, you've become a member of our church. As we got into October, uh, the government released the restrictions a little bit so that we could start to gather again. Um, and for someone like yourself, you know, the online service is really working. I mean, you get to you get to lay in bed with your wife in your pajamas and do church. And yet when we opened up the registration, you were the first person to book. What was the draw to actually come in person to church? So I, I'm a very community-based person. Um, I'm a people's person. I like interacting with people. Um, and I, I don't like the idea of being stuck in my house doing everything online. I would much, much rather be involved with people. And I thought to myself that if I got so much from the online service, I can just imagine how it will be in person. And, and it was just that. It was excellent. And I really love the, the church services when we are able to have them, yeah. Um, they obviously, for me, the best. Brilliant. Well, we're looking forward to being back together again so you can be with us. We're, we're looking forward to being back together again because actually today uh, we had hoped and planned uh, to have Ryan and Candy's baptism service. Uh, Ryan is wanting to not only uh, just follow Christ, but to let everyone else know that um, and be obedient to him in baptism. But we hope that it's not too long before we can do that. Ryan, thanks so much for being with us this My morning. My pleasure. Thanks cool. for having me. Oh man, Stephen, I, I would love more stories like that. Well, let's be expectant for them then. Come on, church. I, I, when I hear stories like that, I'm, I'm revved by what God can do, even through these mediums, in lockdown, everything else. Let's be inviting people. Who knows what God could do? That's great. Listen, you know, we've shared some funny stories. We've shared some great men. What, what are some of the personal things that God has done in your life um, in, in, this, in this time, mate? So... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big question. You know, 11 years, a lot of water under the bridge. Kids have grown up. There's been so much happening in the business, the economy of South Africa, and just so many of those things, Stephen. But uh, what is just amazing for me is just God's underpinning grace. Just the, the fact that we come to back to that. I just think for me, as I've led as a leader, as I've followed as a follower uh, in many ways, God has just been so gracious with me. And, uh, and even when we blunder or we just go off track, it's just that God's loving grace encourages us. It's not like a discipline, it just encourages us back in. And that just puts wind in our sails, Stephen. And, and as we look around and we consider what 11 years has brought us as elders, um, I'm just so grateful to God. Yeah, it's been quite a season. Um, Joe jo and I have just been chatting this week, and, uh, and uh, we didn't realize, actually, that we've also been in our house. This is our 11th year in our house, and so we must have moved house the same time as we planted the church. And, uh, and, and one of the things we've loved is the way we've been able to use our home um, in terms of mission, the way we've been able to invite so many people through our home, how our table has been a place of, of hospitality, of laughter, of discipleship, of maturity, how yeah. we've met people who've shaped our lives and we've been involved in shaping those, the marriage courses we've done, the, the elders meetings we've had around the piano. It, it's, it's, been, it's been wonderful. And, and to have a church which really has got hold yeah. of the importance of hospitality and yeah. community. And, and about you, whenever I think about that, you know, there's certain there's certain people or couples that particularly oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. particularly string to mind. One of which is um, Avon and Kenya Middleton. You know, yes. who's who's who's, uh, whose surname really shouldn't be Middleton. It should be hospitality. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I caught up with Kenya this morning, and I was just saying, you know, what what are yeah. what are some of the things that motivate you? What are some of the reasons that you put such an emphasis on this? Let, let's let's I hear from wait. Kenya. Great. So I'm uh, joined now by Kenya Middleton of Avon and Kenya fame. Uh, most of you will know these guys because they've been around since before our church was launched 11 years ago. Um, Avon and Kenya, otherwise known as Mr. and Mrs. Life Group. Whenever I think of you guys, I just think of you in small groups in, and doing life together. Why is this such a huge value for you both? 
Uh, thanks so much, Stephen. Gee. <laughs> it's so important to do life together. Um, our life group is uh, so interconnected. It's not just about um, having a meal around the table. Our, our businesses have been connected uh, from our finances to our lawyers to our, my, my talent. I make, we make jokes. I run my own talent agency. My life group's my talent, so I'll tap into. Um, and I think we've had Eric even say that, don't you need somebody for your shoots? And I'm like, yes, Eric, I'll call you. <laughs> That's fabulous. That's great. Um, You've also, as well as leading life groups in most of these 11 years, you've also been very involved in our youth ministry. Um, what, what is it that motivates you to get involved with the next generation? So when I was a teenager, I, had, I was pretty naughty. <laughs> and I realized that um, these were such vulnerable years in ide your identity and who you are in Christ. And that was what really drew, drew me to, to the youth, especially young females as well. And... Um, I have loved being a part of their journey in discovering themselves as women um, and, and, and even the teen, teenage boys as well. Um, yeah, we've had some really fun times during the youth as well. That's, that's fab. Uh, you, you, you and Avon are such busy people. Um, you, you're committed to life group, you're committed to youth, but you, you, you're the kind of family, I, you, I'll, I'll drop round at their house, maybe I've got to drop something off on the way back, and, and, and it's bath time, and, and it's carnage, and they'll say, oh no, come in, mix on in, have a bowl of chili, you're so welcome. Uh, hospitality, what, again, why, why is that so important to you? Well, for me, so much happens around the dinner table. So much happens. So much happens when we're eating and when we're sharing. And I think um, in the Bible, there's a lot of um, stuff that happens around the table. And for, we wanted a culture where people felt at home. And what better way to feel at home than eating a meal together and sharing what is exactly happening in the lives of our our life group? Um, and usually, when people are comfortable and well fed, the real stories come out. And then we do life um, and we pray and we share and we have dealt with a lot of deep rooted stuff just by having a meal at our home. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's one way to rope you in pre-COVID times, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. And uh, hey, that sparked some ideas, maybe maybe even a sermon series on food and faith, you know, just that that great combination. Um, uh, maybe watch that space. But uh, uh, can you, Avon, I, I just want to say, you know, we're celebrating our birthday today and these 11 years you've poured so much in. Um, because other people are so important, why are other people essential to you um, in terms of faith? So, when I was in university, um, I had a, a couple that came around me and uh, we did life together. And that was my first encounter of life group. And that's when I really discovered who Jesus was and what God wanted for my life. And that's when I made big shifts in my decisions. Um, surrounding yourself with people who know Jesus and know what it means to love unconditionally is big. And for me, trying to replicate that in my home and with my family is, is big because that's when you're going to really see God's love. Um, and I've got so many stories and I know we don't have a lot of time, but for me, the big thing is sharing um, in community, in love. Guys, uh, life groups this year. We're looking forward to uh, we're looking forward to continue with them. A slight change of emphasis as well. But hey, if you're not yet in a life group, I've got these guys' address. I'd love to connect the two of you. Uh, why don't you send us a send us a note? Go to our website, fill in a form. Uh, uh, how about that? Love, chili, and a bit of Avon and Kenya. What what more could you want? Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Stephen. Cool. Amazing stuff, eh? What an example they are to us. I love that family. I think uh, the hospitality there is amazing. Hey, guys, guys, I just bought you a cup of coffee. I want to say thanks so much for, for your contribution this morning to CBR. Ma it was brilliant. Ma uh, ma uh, Mike, you, you're on camera, bud. <laughs> Pre appreciate the coffee mind, so, uh, but thank you. It's oh, and it's from DC Coffee. Well done. That's a, that's a good start. Good start, Mike. Uh, you mentioned CBR. I think um, now that you've got our attention, uh, just tell us a little bit more. What is CBR? AJ, yes. Uh, CBR is something called a, a, a community Bible reading. And 
It was a couple of weeks ago where you nudged me. Remember that discussion? You, you, you play that card very well. And you nudged me to actually be part of your community. And uh, I'm just loving being, being part of it and just being, being sort of discipled by each of the individuals within that community. It's awesome. Just waking up in the morning, I look forward to it. I really do. Brilliant. Uh, Mike, you, you, you also lead a life group. Um, and uh, you've been with us really since the start of, uh, since the start of God First Four Ways. Uh, how has being part of this community of faith shaped your life? Well, you know, Stephen... The, the first time that I, I, I sort of uh, witnessed the community in action was when Kerry was pregnant and when she came home and brought our beautiful little girl home. And all of a sudden a meal was presented to me at home. And I couldn't believe that this is what a church did. You know, I thought previously churches I've been to is just that you go on a Sunday and that's about it. But church is far more than that. It's about community. It's about caring for each other. And it's about just showing that you do care for each other. And just a small act of a, a, a plate of food for me is just brilliant. Just like the cup of coffee I've given you, I hope you notice. We, we want to model stuff and then we want people to do that. Jesus said, hey, I've come to make you uh, make you disciples, you know, make you fishers of men. And, and uh, Mike, thank you. Thank you for the coffee. Uh, and thank you for the way that you've just leaned in for 11 years. Um, yeah. butted into our morning, our morning conversation um, and just the way you do share your life. We really appreciate it. And I do love that, just uh, getting down and, and doing life together. So I think that's, that's just amazing. You and Kerry are, are amazing. But Stephen, I'm, I'm just thinking and I'm looking at the time. You've got a preach to get to. So while you're off to that and get on with that, Mike, you stay seated. I've just got a few notices for us as a congregation because things uh, are on the move and, and we're incredibly busy. So after church, the service uh, that we're going to have right now, uh, we're going to be serving DC coffee, yes, DC coffee, and a prepackaged uh, piece of cake to celebrate our birthday. All COVID friendly, nobody gets out their car, but we want to do community. We want to do something uh, fun and unusual. So as soon as the preach is finished and the service is over, uh, we'd love you to join us. So come on down. We're going to have coffee together and celebrate birthday cake time together. It's going to be amazing. So I look forward to uh, sharing cake and coffee with you at the drive-thru. See you then. What's really important to us is this coming Tuesday. Uh, we don't make many things mandatory. In fact, we never do, but we want to strongly encourage you. We have a members meeting on Tuesday evening, this coming Tuesday. Uh, it's just so important without our church services and getting to meet each and every one of you kind of regularly or uh, in it. It's just good to have a moment where we get to talk as family about the things that are happening, what God's uh, saying to us, uh, and we're going to be doing that this coming Tuesday. So we want to ask you, take out those uh, phones that you've got, your calendars, your diaries, and make this a must-be moment for us as a family. We've got some great news, uh, and we'd really like just to uh, share a few things that are on our hearts. So church, this Tuesday, let's make it happen. All be there, at least one of the family unit uh, members, but please, let's make every effort to be there. That'll be amazing. So there we are. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's kind of the beginning of the year. Life groups are about to kick off. It's not going to be this Tuesday because we are all meeting together uh, as a family. And then the following week, we're going to start life groups. That's going to be amazing, uh, but not nearly as amazing as the Word of God, which we're about to hear from Stephen. So church, buckle up. Here's God through Stephen. Let's listen with all our hearts. Thanks, AJ. And happy birthday once again. 11 years old, it's a time to celebrate. It's a time to look back at the faithfulness of God to us um, over this last 11 years. And looking back at God's faithfulness is such a wonderful and important thing to do. It can inspire us. It can fill us with confidence, with faith. Uh, it can embolden us and give us strength and courage for the future. I know in challenging times, I, I love to look back at the faithfulness of, God, faithfulness of God and remind him, hey, God's kept me this far. It gives me a confidence and he'll keep me into the future. It's true that in times of grief, uh, we like to look back and share happy memories together. It's why often at funerals, we want to share great memories of the person who we've lost. In times of uncertainty, we like to remind ourselves of what is certain and what is sure. I think that's why New Year's, birthdays, anniversaries are actually God's gift to us. They're like the rear view mirror in the car. You know, as you're driving, the rear view mirror is actually really important to us as we navigate the roads. But we can't spend our whole time looking in the rear view mirror. If we do, guess what? We're going to crash. 
And so it's important that we spend most of our time looking forward to what God has for us. But it's so helpful at times to ponder and to look back at what God has done. But looking forward right now at the start of 2019 can be more challenging than it's ever been before. Life is more uncertain than it's ever been before. The COVID pandemic is at its absolute peak. And we just don't know what next week holds, let alone what the rest of this year. And so this morning, what I want to do is open the Bible together. And I want to look at Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews together. Um, And we're, we're going to start right at the end of chapter 11 and then work our way through chapter 12. Because it speaks both to the past the present and in to the future as we move on from this point. Just a bit of context before we get into the scripture. Hebrews chapter 11, probably the most famous chapter in the book of Hebrews, yeah, is, is often called as the faith chapter. And what the writer has done is he's gone through that book and he's, he's listed so many heroes of the faith from the Old Testament. And he says, by faith they did this and by faith they, they accomplished that. And he works through so many characters that we know and love. And then he gets to verse 39, and that's where we're picking it up this morning. It says this in verse 38 and 39. And all these, though commended through their faith, all these that the people he's just listed, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God has provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. What the writer is really saying is this moment, to us, this moment right now matters. And I think many of us need to hear that this morning. I think there's a danger that in this season we can actually put our lives on hold. We can just think, look, I just need to get through this season. We just need the vaccine to arrive in South Africa. We just need this second wave to to hit its peak and start to decline, then I can think about getting on with my life again. Then I can think about serving the purposes of God again. Then I can think about making a difference. And the writer here is saying, no, 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 this matter, this moment counts right now. He he looks back at the heroes of faith and he said, you know what? They didn't receive it all because God is still busy. God has said, one day I will return. One day this will be over. There will be no more pain, no more tears, no more COVID. Praise God. But right now I'm not returning because guess what? I'm still at work. I've still got things that need to be achieved. And yes, great things have been done through these heroes of faith. But I'm not coming yet. I I kind of picture sometimes heaven with the angels thinking, is it now? Is it today? Is he returning? Is he going to make all things new today? And God's saying, no, not yet. I'm still busy in four ways. I've still got things to be done. There's still people there to be saved. There's still a generation to be won. And that's why right now counts. That's why this year counts. Because the Bible reminds us that the church is God's perfecting agency in the world. What does that mean for me? How can I make my life count? Well, then the writer opens up another page, writes chapter 12 at the top, and then he begins to say, okay, this is how your life counts. And as we look forward into 2021, 20, uh, I want us to open our own page and say, okay, how am I going to make my life count? We're going to go through it a bit at a time and look at that. So chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Okay, because we're part of this thing that has started before us, because we're a part of this thing which involved all of those Old Testament heroes of faith, all of the New Testament heroes of faith, because of that, what? We're going to fight against sin. First thing this year, guys, our fight against sin matters. Because of this great cloud of witnesses who are looking on, because Jesus is perfecting his work until he returns, our fight against sin matter. We might ask, does, our, does, our, does sin really matter? Yes, it does. We often treat, see, treat sin as a deeply personal issue. It's just between me and God. I slipped up in that area. But the writer here is putting our sin in the context of a multi-generational community. 
one that went before us cheering us on, and one that comes after us and will be recipients of our faithfulness or our foolishness. This helps me. In my fight against sin, it's good to think about the legacy of faith that got me here in the first place. Consider Moses, Abraham, Rahab, people from chapter 11, people who made huge sacrifices of, guess what, I'm a blessed recipient. Consider my own heritage. We as a family have looked into our family tree and we've actually traced it back um, to the French Huguenots who fled, uh, fled France in 1685 and fled to Scotland. Their surname was Jacques, J-A-C-Q-U-E-S, and they changed it to the, to the Scottish version, Jack. Consider my grandparents, whose example changed the trajectory of my life. Consider my mum, who clung to God, having been suddenly widowed, aged 33, with two young boys to raise, and showed me what it was to be a Christ follower in the midst of adversity. It helps me to fight sin with everything I have because it matters to more than just me. And you might look at that and think, ah, oh, Stephen, that's all right for you standing there with four centuries of Christian heritage. Have you met my family? Have you looked back at my family tree? It's the who's who of chops. Then it starts with you. Your fight with sin. You fight sin with everything you have for the generations that will follow you. That will be perfected by God because of your story. A fight for holiness is something that is our choice. It, it, it isn't a gift of the Spirit. The Spirit helps us, but it's our choice. It's a command. Um, AJ once said something quite wise, and in fact, it was so shocking, I actually wrote it down. Um, he, he said this, I think there are a great deal of things that we ask God to do, which are actually our responsibility. And when we do them, we cause him great delight. Holiness is one, contentment is another, and obedience is a third. As we look back on 11 years of God's faithfulness, Let's look forward and commit ourselves to a life of radical personal holiness. We don't do this to earn God's favor. Hey, we already have that. But because of it, we do it because of it. There are earthly consequences to our sin that sometimes go down through generations. We must be careful not to overplay grace so that it becomes cheap grace. We've so become so accustomed to cheap grace that we instinctively shy away from the more demanding calls to holiness and obedience. Because you see, cheap grace is grace without discipleship. It's grace without holiness, which in effect is grace without the cross. C.H. Spurgeon said this, an unwatchful church very soon becomes an unholy church. Where have we, where have you, become unwatchful in your fight against sin. Not really thinking it matters on any scale. So our fight against sin, it it matters. Let's move on. Still Still in verse one. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you've not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. Next one. Your endurance this year matters. What matters more than how you've grown in the last 11 years is how you're going to keep going in the 12th. So what are your plans to endure this year? What is your plan for spiritual growth in 2021? Who will walk with you? Who will help you persevere? What is your plan to endure in the faith, to keep pressing on? You see, the writer here doesn't want us to be tossed around from, from experience to circumstance. Uh, to, 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 uh, he wants us to stay strong to the end. 
He doesn't want what's happening in society, what's happening in politics, what's happening in our nation, what's happening with COVID to knock us off our strife, stride. He wants a people who will push on and endure. And he rather cheekily, I think, throws in this comment. It's like, come on, guys. It's not as if you're even shedding blood. You're not even part of a generation that's being persecuted and kill, killed for your faith. And let you're whining or you're moaning or you're tripping over or you're not growing. You're not enduring. Come on. Don't be disillusioned. Don't be faint-hearted. Don't give up. Press on. Whenever I look for an illustration about pressing on, I invariably, as hard as I try, end back up at the Comrades Marathon. Because it's the thing which I probably had to endure the most with. And the uprun particularly. Dragging this body 90 kilometers uphill is no small feat. And at times, and I did, you reach the depths of a man's soul. With about 20 kilometers to go, I was finished. And I came across the tent which belongs to the four ways road runners. And in there were two or three people. And one was very sympathetic and, and said, can I get you a, can I get you a drink? And, and, and can I, can I, what can I give for you? Another one was just kind of encouraging me, saying, come on, just, you haven't got far to go. But I wanted to give up. And a third one looked me in the eye and he gave me an absolute kicking and said, get out there and finish this race. And I got out there. A few kilometers later, you hit Polly Shorts. It's a beast. After Polly Shorts, you hit uh, Polly's. And it's an even bigger beast. And I got to the top of this massive hill. And there was Avon and Kenya, cheering me on, giving me encouragement. And I said, I've got to the top of Polly's. And, and Avon said, no, you haven't. You've only got to the top of little Polly's. You've still got Polly's to come, but you can do it. And he breathed courage into me. I walked the last three kilometers, but I finished the race. What is your plan to not grow faint-hearted? What is your plan to endure through this season and through this year? What are your next steps to grow spiritually? Sometimes that's the most important question. What are your next steps? As I left that tent, I was not imagining the next 20 kilometers. I was imagining the next 20 steps. And after that, the next 20 steps. Because 20 kilometers just seemed too much. But I'll do 20 steps and then another 20. What are your next steps to growing in maturity? Who are you being mentored by? Or who are you mentoring? Our hope this year as an eldership team is that every single member of our church feels that 2021 is a year where I grew spiritually. It's part of our mission statement. We want to be a gospel-centered church, which is growing. Uh, new, it's growing uh, a gospel-centered church, which is growing spiritually. That's growing numerically. That's growing cross-generationally, cross-culturally. You, you, you know, the, you, you know the, the statement. But let's take seriously that growing spiritually this year. We're going to talk about how we can do that practically on Tuesday night as Ryan's going to roll out a brand new, uh, a brand new program through our, uh, our Sunday preaching, through our life groups, and through new mentorship opportunities. But let's press on. Verse 5. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when approved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son who he receives. I'm not going to go into that in great detail, but I would just say this. Our third thing is our identity in Christ matters. We need to remember right now that we are sons and daughters of his. Sonship is key. But when you look through the scripture, what is the surest sign of sonship that we come across? (laughs) It's discipline. There's going to be times in our journey, in our relationship with a heavenly father, where we feel pain and we feel difficulty and we feel his discipline because a loving father loves, disciplines his children. And when disciplined, we remember that we are sons and daughters. Let's carry on. Verse 14, strive for peace with everyone and for holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up 
and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. And no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, and he found no chance to repent, even though he sought it with tears. What is this saying? Our community matters. All this language that we're reading is plural. The Christian faith is plural. It is meant to be done in community. Just think back to the garden. God created the Garden of Eden, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. Can you imagine what it was like to be Adam? Living in perfection. Communing daily with God. But there was one thing that God said wasn't good, and that's man on his own. That's not good. We're not designed to be alone. Who are you going to walk alongside this year? Making sure that they don't fail to obtain the gospel and grace of God. You see, you're not just responsible for your own walk with Jesus. See to the people around you don't miss out on the grace of God. This should change our posture towards Christian friendship. This should give us an urgency towards community and loving one another because it's part of God's perfect plan for his people. You should be pursuing people in their walk with Jesus, showing up in their lives, showing kindness, friendship, and pointing them towards, G- towards Jesus, towards holiness, and towards grace. I mean, it's been great to hear today Ryan just sharing about, you know, I've become a Christian pretty much all on my own, but I can't wait to get to church. I can't wait to share this with other people. I can't wait to be the first person to sign up to be in church because I understand, even as a baby Christian, that I need each other. It's great listening to Kanya who's saying, you know, how do you do church and life without being in life group, without mentoring a generation which is to come, without doing hospitality and sharing our faith together? Your faith isn't just for you. It's for those around you. How are you going to steward that this year? It's important. I've been, I've been really encouraged by my wife, Joanna, who you know, has, has looked at the restrictions that have been forced upon us through COVID and was like, this isn't going to deter me from maintaining my friendships, my relationships, and my discipleship of others. And so what has she done? She goes for walks. She goes outside with a mask invites a friend, goes for a walk, shares her life and listens to them share their lives as they walk and talk together, as they share Jesus together. Who are you going to encourage this year? You're going to get into groups of three, little triplets of God's gospel and God's grace as we, as we encourage one another because our community matters. Who around you is failing to obtain the grace that of God and needs some strengthening from you? Who are you? Who can you lovingly provoke? Who you can you share the gospel with? We're nearly done, so let's skip to the end of the chapter in verse 28, where it says, summing up, therefore, therefore let us be grateful. For receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let, a, of, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. 2021, guys, your worship matters. God has been so wonderfully kind and faithful to us over the past 11 years. So let's keep a big view of him as we go into this year ahead. Let us be people who regularly stop and consider just how good he is, who wonder at his holiness and his majesty, how kind he is, how mighty he is, how merciful he is, how gracious he is, how forgiving he is. We can so easily become despondent, so easily become disillusioned with everything around us. We need to lift our gaze. Our worship changes that as we look to Jesus, as we pour out our hearts in gratitude and thanks. Therefore, let us be grateful. Guys, this moment right now matters. This week matters. This year matters. Why? Because God is at work and he's working his purposes out and he invites us our church 
to be part of that. So let us not grow weary or faint-hearted. Let's fight against the sin that would so easily ensnare us. And let us press on together to take hold of all that God has for us. May the Lord bless you. Church, it has just been amazing to be with you. Uh, I'm standing up. I am on my way out to the door. I'm expecting to find you in the car park right now as you come down to collect birthday cake and coffee. Come on, guys. Let's have a community moment. God bless you and God keep you as God works through you this week. See you soon.